What's going on, Badger Nation? Welcome to the PPC Den Podcast, the first and longest running Amazon advertising podcast show here to help make all of your Amazon advertising dreams come true. Speaking of one of my dreams, I'm incredibly excited and elated and privileged today because, fun fact, dear listener, I don't know if you know this, but our very first guest, I believe, was this man himself, who's been on an incredible Amazon advertising journey. Can't wait to hear about it. Can't wait to learn from and with him. Welcome back to the show, Daniel Tejada. Good to be back. Uh, yeah, you've, uh, you caught me at probably my first million dollars in spend way back in the day. So excited to uh, come back now that we've spent a little over 35 at this point. Woo, up and come. I, you know, you were just an up and comer just so long ago, which I, I want to share some things here. I want to talk you up. Number one. You started your own agency since we last spoke with you. Uh, You were previously working at an agency. You launched your own one, which is huge. That in and of itself is an episode right there. Uh, And then on your company's website, and the company's name is Straight Up Growth. Check them out, straightupgrowth.com. Learn a thing or two. Uh, The headline of your website says, we'll drive more than 300 million in Amazon sales this year. And then your LinkedIn uh, headline says, let's make it 700 million this year. Hit me up, doing it for my mom. Dude, that's great. Uh, So congratulations on all of that. Uh, Still based in San Diego. Is that correct? Oh yeah, sunny San Diego here today. Mm -hmm. Uh, How has, you know, the bulk of the show is gonna be about a relatively new Amazon marketing tool brand metrics, we're going to talk about uh, what problems it solves, how to find it, what the nuts and bolts of it are, and then how to work it into a strategy. I really could, we really could dig so deep into what the journey was like from working at an agency to launching your own agency. I'll reserve to just two questions about it. Uh, What has been the most exciting best part of it and what has been the most challenging part of it yeah great question i think what's been most exciting has been you know the growth so far uh we started in february right before covid hit um you know we're planning on launching and going to conferences and i remember when covid first hit and all of the conferences started to cancel like prosper canceled expo west canceled I'm like, cool. So i quit my uh steady job to uh go start this thing with yes. zero clients and now not even you know uh sure if it's going to actually work out but luckily you know we've been able to uh to scale it uh we, we managed 35 million dollars in ad spend right now um, which is awesome we've got 20 employees uh and we're supposed to hire another 20 more this year um, so i think that's one of my favorite pieces is really the growth and even our employee growth is, is something we uh we push really hard we do so much training like i personally am training my employees um every single week uh just to make sure that we're still uh, progressing forward. So it's been cool to see uh, their growth as well. Mm-hmm. I love that. And in terms of the most challenging, because it's not all sunshine and rainbows. Oh, yeah. Um, I would say one of the most difficult pieces has been that Amazon's PPC inflation this past year was one of the greatest it's ever been. Mm-hmm. I know I ran like just an analysis on uh, 50 million in spend in 2020 and then 15 million same clients in spend for 2021, uh, saw an average increase of 25% in your average cost per click bid. And so that obviously has created new challenges in regards to strategy, in regards to like KPI goals, you know, dealing with clients and stuff. There's there's a lot more that you need to do than in the past. PPC's just gotten harder, but still doable. That's right. You know, um, I remember when I was in college, like going on the internet, there used to be these ads and when i was just first learning about like digital marketing and ppc there used to be these ads and these people online these gurus that would you know train people like how to make money online like in the early days of that and it was like a lot of google stuff google ads stuff and it was a lot of like this click is only 10 cents so you can send hundreds of thousands of people to it and like your your conversion rate doesn't even matter because it's like the traffic is so cheap and it hasn't been that extreme on amazon but clicks have just been getting more expensive uh they started much cheaper conversion rates are high and now it's a little bit more expensive so we need you really do need every tool at your disposal to get a leg up 
And what's, oh, yeah. cool, what's cool about Amazon is, is that it's getting more and more mature. It's getting more and more complex. There's more tools at our disposal, which is what we're going to talk about in the meat of this episode. So Daniel, today I am, I'm stoked that we're doing more guests uh, on our show this year uh, than we ever have before, uh, because it allows, you know, if nothing else for my own selfish purpose of getting exposed to different people's experiences, uh, like hopefully we have you back on the show in you know, six months or so uh, to like hear what's been the most exciting part of your Amazon PPC journey since then. But what's cool about it, this was not a topic that I expected us to talk about, but I'm so happy that we are talking about it because it's something that I had heard of, but I hadn't had a lot of firsthand experience with. Yep. Uh, and what's so good about talking to true practitioners, like really trying to push the envelope, is that you did get exposed to this. So we have our brand metrics dashboard, which we're going to be talking about today. Talk to me a little bit about like what life was like before brand metrics and what life is like now, like how do, has this changed your thinking or your overall strategic techniques with Amazon advertising? That's a great question. Um, I think one of the running themes that most people have with Amazon is, you know, not as much data as they'd like compared to your .com, right? Uh, when we were first, like had our first podcast way back in the day, Amazon had sponsored products, they had sponsored yeah. brands, <laughs> and that was the extent of it, mm-hmm. right? Even from a reporting perspective. Yeah, maybe not even product targeting. Oh yeah, no, I don't think product targeting was live yet. I'm pretty sure you couldn't negate ASINs even like with an auto campaign. So Amazon has been progressing significantly um, as their ad business has grown tremendously. They've put a lot of investment um, into kind of the ad console, uh, into allowing you to get more data. Um, so brand metrics definitely got me really excited. Uh, very similar to when brand analytics first came out. Right? Mm-hmm. Brand analytics, really great info, but Amazon doesn't really share how to use it very frequently, mm-hmm. right? Brand metrics is a very similar type of piece, kind of nonchalantly launched. Uh, didn't really tell people there's just a little indicator in your ad campaign mm-hmm. console that there's this new tab, uh, but there's not even that much kind of built out on it. Uh, the more I look at it, you know, the more excited I've gotten because it helps to bridge some of those data gaps that I've had um, in the past um, on things that I assume, but I don't have actual data behind and now I can start to, you know, actually pull some certain things out. So the tool, it appears to be a good investigative tool. It allows you to sort of have another view of a time frame. You know, a lot, a lot of times we think of analyzing old PPC data, we just go to the date selector and if we're lucky, we can select that month in the date selector. Yep. You know, Amazon has those limitations of how far back you can go, but generally that's what you're limited to. You can download an old search term report or an old bulk file. You know, you can do that kind of look back, but this tool seems to allow a different kind of look back over a time frame. Mm-hmm. So talk to me about like, what problem does brand metrics even solve? Yeah. So it solves, I think a couple of different problems for you. Um, One is, you know, we really focus on new to brand, right? Uh, We think of Amazon not just as, you know, retail marketplace, but it's actually the world's largest product search engine, right? You've got 65% of searches starting there, where we really love is the 69% of customer searches that don't include a brand name, right? So new to brand is a very big component for us. Uh, One of the first problems brand metric solves is it actually gives you a percentage of your new to brand customers uh, there. So that can be very fruitful for identifying, are we driving new to brand, right? Am I spending a lot on branded and am I really just acquiring the same customers that already were kind of in the mix in the first place there? So that's definitely one of the biggest components is that new to brand uh, piece there. The other thing that I think is really awesome is some of the brand search data that it provides on that front. So it gives you the opportunity to see what your actual brand search numbers are. Um, So you can start to track that on a week over week or a month over month basis. That helps bridge the gap with some of the outside marketing efforts that you're doing. You know, with the increase in in, uh, ad inflation, I'm seeing a lot more advertisers or Amazon sellers just being a lot more um, robust in their strategy. And so leveraging that outside traffic, you know, having a brand search metric around that helps to bridge some of those gaps there. Um, One of the other pieces that I really like, it actually gives you a number of branded customers who purchased, right? So you're starting to understand how many actual buyers do you have in the the mix um, on a consistent basis? You know, is that growing? Is that shrinking? Um, And that can help you troubleshoot 
a lot of different things. It's helped me troubleshoot seasonality. Uh, it's helped me troubleshoot random drops in sales uh, for a month. It's also helped me identify random spikes in sales too. Um, you know, sometimes you have that, well, where did these sales come from? Brand metrics helps to, uh, to define that. Um, and they do have this one cool metric that also starts to kind of tease what your customer lifetime value looks like on Amazon. It doesn't give you the full data set, but you actually get your top 10% and your subscribe and save customers. What are they spending over 12 months um, by month? So you can also see how that KPI changes uh, there. Yeah. And, and it's important to know, even before we start dissecting this together and, and how to get value out of each section, is that the first thing to know is that there's no way to tease out pure advertising data and pure just total marketplace performance. So yep. all the data that we'll be talking about is referring to the totality of every customer, uh, which is an interesting point to know. It would be nice to be able to tease this out to get a comparison of like, mm -hmm. this is how I'm doing non-paid and this is how I'm doing paid. But for right now, all the, everything that we'll be talking about is going to be combined. Let's start walking through what this looks like when you first load it up. Uh, and by the way, you can find this, uh, it's in our show notes. You can just click it. It's just advertising.amazon.com slash BCM slash overview. Uh, if you just type that in, you'll, you'll be able to get there in case you're having trouble finding it. It's also in the left-hand column uh, on the advertising console at advertising.amazon.com. Advertising so when you first click this, uh, can you walk us through what it is that we're looking at on that overview page? So a couple things that you're going to see uh, right off the bat, uh, they kind of break it off into sort of four sections. First screen you're going to see is very high level um, sort of KPIs there by subcategory. So one of the cool things with brand metrics, like if you're a brand that has multiple items in different categories, you can actually refine the views uh, specific to those subcategories. So if you're trying to launch, let's say one particular, you know, you just launched a new product, you're looking at that specific subcategory, it does provide that data set. Um, I like to start this exercise though, typically looking at the first row, which tends to have the highest number of brand customers, right? So that's gonna show you typically the totality of your overall uh, kind of sales and, and customer data there. Now, once you click in um, uh, to your kind of individual subcategory there, uh, it's broken out into essentially four sections. The first section is gonna show you three key metrics, uh, your shopper engagement rate, your customer conversion rate, and your percentage of new to brand customers. What I found, shopper engagement rate, I've never seen change but beyond zero to 5%. It seems to be kind of stuck on all accounts in that way. Um, so I really wouldn't worry about that KPI too much. It does show you your customer conversion rate um, during that time frame, you know, it's helpful, but data that you're probably already aware of without this tool, uh, so not necessarily as relevant. When you go to that overview page, uh, and what we'll do for each section here is just basically describe the different kinds of tables that you'll see, as well as what each column means, and then how we would sort of use the columns. So the first thing that you see when you go here to the brand metrics is you see every single subcategory that you're in. Um, so it's kind of cool to be able to see the categories, subcategories, and even like several levels deep. So I'm looking at one right now, I see snack foods as a category, snack foods, bars as a category, fruit and nut as a bar. And then for each category that I'm selling in, I have four columns, total brand shoppers, engaged shopper rate, customer conversion rate, which is so cool, and a percent new to brand. And one thing to know that when you're looking at all of these metrics, you are fixed in how you can use the date selector. So you cannot go and say, show me all of quarter four. Uh, you cannot go and say, I just want to view these 14 days in October. They kind of fix you into how you can view this data. So all those metrics that you can see pretty much anywhere in the brand metrics overview, you have fixed time frames, So you can only look at it at a week at a time, and then you get to pick what week you wanna look for, or you can select a month at a time, and then only select what month you're looking at. So there are some date limitations that doesn't go back too far. Uh, most accounts seem to be only going back into like summer of 2021. So that's a little bit about the time frame and the first metrics that you'll see on this brand metrics overview before we dig in to our particular category. So Daniel, let's walk through some of these columns that we see on this overview. 
Um, so, so the first one that we see is total brand shoppers. So yeah, so total brand shoppers, very important um, KPI here. That's essentially talking through uh, the number of folks that you have within um, kind of your consideration bucket there at that point. So those are folks that haven't necessarily converted, but they are aware of your brand, right? They're interested mm-hmm. in um, kind of the brand itself. Um, and so definitely a very uh, important one to, yeah. uh, to note there. Yeah. And I think you'll see a lot when we walk through some of these metrics that, you know, Amazon as a whole company loves to have advertisers trying to get out of Amazon is not just a bottom of funnel platform. You can do things like generate awareness, generate consideration. Like there's actual things that you can do to make people more aware of your brand. So that's definitely a lens to view some of this data where, you know, you have the bottom of funnel, like direct response, like someone search and buy right away. And then you move up and we start to talk about things like engaged shoppers or brand shoppers or consideration. So that's just something to know as we work through these uh, values. Up next, we have engaged shopper rate. So we moved from total brand shoppers to engaged shopper rate. Uh, Talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah. So essentially what it's doing is it's taking the consideration um, kind of what what Amazon would consider the consideration bucket. So customers that have either done a branded search, customers that have been to a detail page view, or customers that have added to cart, right? So they hadn't necessarily purchased yet. Um, and then it's essentially percentage range of shoppers in the selected category that your brand has driven an engagement with or purchased from in the selected time frame. So if we're looking at, let's say, the last 30, uh, you know, the month of December, and it's divided by the total shoppers with more than one detailed page view in the selected category, mm-hmm. right? So what it's trying to understand is, you know, as customers are searching, as they're viewing, you know, as they're adding to cart, how many of them are actually purchasing? I'll say as a caveat that. In every single one of my accounts, it's always zero to five percent. Um, there, I haven't seen it spike past that, so I do think that number, that KPI, will probably change over time. But it does seem to be a little flat um, on the reporting front. Right. I mean, anytime you're comparing how many total people, to- total shoppers there were for an entire category, compared to just people that viewed your page, that number is going to be small. Uh, there's obviously going to be way more category shoppers than people viewing just your individual products. And then finally, you know, here's the metric that Amazon love has a love-hate relationship with, which is actual conversion rate. We have unit session percentages. We have all these corollaries to conversion rate, but just give us conversion rate everywhere. And they actually did that here. So this one's a pretty straightforward one. How many people, you know, considered you, meaning how many people viewed your products to how many actual purchased? That's pretty straightforward there. Yep. I I will say the one caveat with brand metrics is your traditional conversion rate, like your unit session percentage is going to be based off detail page views specifically. Um, With the customer conversion rate that you see through brand metrics, it does include folks that are searching for your brand and kind of getting to detail uh, pages themselves. So they do consider like your brand that let's say is doing a lot of like uh, DSP and you're getting some, an increase in branded search. Uh, that does kind of get factored into the customer conversion rate as well. Yeah, you know, it's a perfect, you know, conversion rate is one of those difficult metrics, like how you actually define it. Uh, So yeah, and then the last one that you'll see on this overview is going to be percent sales new to brand. Uh, Another fairly straightforward one is just how many people purchase from you in this time frame that have not purchased from you in the last uh, 12 months. Yep. Uh, And then you can click through to a category and that is where the real fun begins. So now we have a report that probably looks most different to you um, because it's going to be sharing some views and some definitions that we don't often get in Amazon PPC talk. Like all of this sort of awareness, how are you doing at growing awareness of your brand? How are you doing at getting people to consider your brand compared to others? And that's, that's a theme that I really like about this. You know, up top, they have show peer comparison after you click into a particular category where you can compare your performance versus competitor performance. So the utility of being able to get some insight into how you are doing versus other advertisers, other marketers in the industry, other companies in the industry is so valuable because you can benchmark yourself. You can look at things and say, well, what is my conversion rate compared to? 
the category benchmark? Am I above, below? And Amazon is just continuing to sprinkle these conversion rate comparison, how are you doing versus your comparison companies all over the place. We've got some in sponsored brand reports. We've got now the brand metrics report. So I love this trend. I love benchmarks. Maybe one day we'll, we'll also get some of these things for every kind of metric, um, but I love these category benchmarks. So first, first and foremost, you're hit with the sort of top section, which is key metrics of the category that you're in. Um, so walk us through what people will see when they first look at the key metrics. Yeah, great question. So uh, you're going to see, again, a couple of this, the um, same KPIs that we saw previously. So shopper engagement rate, mm -hmm. our, our customer conversion rate, which we defined, and then our percentage of new to brand customers. Uh, mm -hmm. So that piece is going to be the same. The difference in this view is we now get the category median and yep. the top of the category for it. So you know, I'm looking at one of my clients right now, right? Our customer conversion rates at a 25.9%. I know the category median is at 20.84%. So I mm -hmm. know that we're beating where our standard is. Uh, now the top of my category is at a 46% uh, there from a customer conversion rate. Mm -hmm. So I'm going against someone that's converting extremely high yeah. here. Um, so I definitely have room to grow, uh, but I know that I'm performing at a better rate than where my average is. Yeah. Every person who works in Amazon uh, marketing services is going to use this. Whenever they hear from a client that says, hey, I've already optimized my page, so it's ready to go. I'm done. I finished conversion rate optimization. And it's like, well, did you know you're the top category, the top competitors have like twice the conversion rate? Yep. So there's, there's always something to do with conversion rate. So what's cool about this is it'll actually show you your conversion rate through time period A versus time period B. Uh, like pre A, like the time period before, uh -huh. which is really cool. So I can see like this particular client improve their conversion rate from 27%, which is really uh -huh. nice. Uh -huh. So I could see that. And another little caveat here is when they talk about category top, they're talking about the top percentiles and Amazon defines that as like the top 5% of brands in the category. So they call that like the 95th, 99th percentile, uh, as opposed to like the first percentile. So they consider like higher being yep. like uh, a bigger company. So similar metrics on this first section, great insight for comparing you versus comp competition and how your conversion rates decks up. And then we kind of have this cool little funnel below it where we have awareness. How well are we doing with awareness? How well are we doing with consideration and how well we're doing with purchasing all compared to sort of the category median and the category top. Um, so it's really cool to just get a sense of where your brand fits into the overall brand landscape. Now, I'd love to take awareness because I've got a really interesting one. For this particular brand that I'm looking at, they have 300 brand searches. In case anyone is unclear, a brand search is just someone who is uh, searching on your brand, you know, straight up. So they're aware of you. They, when we use this as a measurement of like awareness, you know, if you were to look at Nike's awareness, there's probably millions and millions of searches with the word Nike in it. Uh, what's interesting about this client, and it's a perfect area of opportunity, they have about 300 brand searches compared to the category median of 1,000 compared to the category top of 100,000. That means their, their competition has you know, over 1,000 times more brand recognition. People are seeing, the, people know their competitors' brands and they're searching it, and the median they're searching you know, three times more. And then the category top, they're searching 10 times over that. So we can start getting into some strategy here now. Yeah, I was, I was going to say that's, that's one we should definitely take a little pause on um, there with, with, especially with what you just mentioned, right? I have this all the time with certain clients where we're spending aggressively, right? We're starting to own some of the new to brand search terms in the category. We're showing up in brand analytics, but we're still not doing the same volumes sales wise as some of the big you know competitors in the category, mm -hmm. right? Um, one of the things that we've never had before is the opportunity to get kind of benchmarks on what those competitors are actually doing, mm -hmm. right? So when you have those questions on why are they beating us? Well, you know, they're beating us because I have 300 branded searches a month mm -hmm. and they have 100,000 searches a month. Uh, a branded search, you know, um, is always going to typically convert better than a non-branded search term will simply because that customer is already engaged in the brand. They're going to Amazon because they know what they want to buy. Right. Um, it's not going to be a hundred percent conversion rate, but it's 
going to be probably double what your conversion rate is for a non-branded search term. It's a really cool metric because it defines like how your brand fits into the overall landscape. Uh Um, You know, brand, like the classic debate when it comes to PPC and brand metrics, it's, you know, most advertisers loathe bidding on their own brand. And I think that's a great conversation to have of like, how much should we be bidding on our own brand? Uh, How expensive should it be when we do? Um, But I think the thing that maybe gets left out of that conversation is that it's an incredible sign of a booming company if there are lots of people searching your brand. Mm -hmm. Like that is a phenomenal problem to have. Mm -hmm. I've seen in some cases, uh, some clients I've worked with, uh, they were spending like 80% of their ad spend on their brand. And they're like, man, like this is so much. And it's just like an incredible opportunity, number one, to launch a lot of non-branded traffic off the back of that. And then the other thing is, of course, they have such an incredible brand. So when you can see that, that's a really strong sign of a company that's going to be built to last and like has real sticking power because so many people are aware of it. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's talk about like boosting it. So if you had a client, like in this example, where they're in the 10th percentile, so they're in the bottom 10%, only 300 branded searches, the median has a thousand, the category top has a hundred thousand. What kinds of things would you say to this client to help them boost it up? Like what can sellers do here? Uh, great question. I'm actually, uh, I'm doing that right now for one of my clients in sort of the beauty category where we're spending so aggressively on Amazon PPC. We're starting to really hit pretty well on some of our, our key kind of search terms we're trying to rank on that are non-branded. Uh, but my branded volume is still a hundred times less than my top of the category, right? Um, mm-hmm. The cool thing about this brand metrics piece is we were able to go through this with the client and those benchmarks in particular got him very excited about, okay, how do we drive the brand building component? And so there's a couple ways you can do so. Uh, One is going to be outside traffic. There's tons of different mediums. You can do things like email marketing. You could do things like influencer marketing, uh, even traditional Facebook ads. Some brands, like I like to use Goalie as an example. Goalie is one of the largest supplement brands. On Amazon, they've got a small catalog, but they are incredible at launching products. And a big Mm -hmm. reason for that is they drive massive brand awareness and massive, massive brand volume uh, to help them launch, right? They do everything from traditional TV buys um, where they actually call out Amazon as the place to shop. As soon as one of those things hits, they instantly see massive sales velocity. They instantly see reviews kick through, you know, right off the bat, uh, which also allows them for higher conversion rates for their PPC efforts, right? So they're Mm -hmm. a more extreme example, but I've got scrappier brands that do things like influencers, right? You can reach out to micro nano influencers, you know, it's a little bit more work. Uh, It's cheaper, but you can start to identify ways to start to slowly build the brand that way is one thing that I've seen be very successful. Uh, And then of course, you've got Amazon's DSP, you know, and AMG capabilities. So it started with just traditional, you know, they're programmatic, like on, uh, on site has definitely expanded significantly. I've got some of my bigger brands doing things like streaming video for TV uh, and things like that, you'll find that that's not a very high ROAS um, when you first kind of run a segment like that. It's more top funnel, but what you start to see, branded search goes up significantly, right? Branded search and detail page views start to go up, and then you want to implement things like retargeting. So you've gotten people to start to search. What's the secondary message to get them to actually purchase? So you can use that DSP uh, piece as well to help build up that brand search for sure. Um, and yeah, they've, they've definitely built out the DSP a lot further since, you know, a couple of years ago when it first started, there's just so many capabilities and, and definitely opportunities to create brand search through that as well. For sure. Yeah. I mean, the list of things that you can do for branding outside of Amazon is massive on Amazon. Of course you have DSP, AMG. Um, and if you don't want to tap into those things, some sponsored display, audience-based targeting, some competitor targeting to like insert yourself next to some of these top competitors. Um, the list is very long and this is like your kicking off point. Like, so when you're looking for new ideas, well, Hey, what should I be working on? And you see something like this where like, man, people just aren't aware of our brand. Like maybe they're buying from us, but if you really wanted to build a company that's stronger, more resilient, built to last kind of thing, this is an important part of it. Yeah. Or even something like a super low hanging fruit, Amazon posts, right? Most yeah. people don't do Amazon posts. You get tons of free impressions mm-hmm. uh, on those posts there. Uh, and, you know, it only shows up on mobile, but I've seen it like you show up on competitor pages. You know, it's not something that's going to convert right away, but that is something that I've seen start to increase branded search as well. And 
something simple people don't think about. Very cool. So we've got tons of ideas from that. And then we move down the funnel from awareness to consideration. If we were to define the differences between these two, awareness is just people searching for your brand. Consideration is actually people who made it to view a detail page. When you tack on movement from a branded search to a detail page, and then how many people are actually adding it to the cart. So you can actually see these metrics and how they have changed over time. And again, compare it versus your brand, category median, and category top. And walk us through this other section that we have here, which is a return on engagement section of these things. What, What does this mean? So I really like this because it Amazon basically is taking the last 12 months of data for these particular segments. So for example, let's take a look at like detail page views only, right? Amazon is actually putting a dollar amount to what value mm-hmm. that brings to you uh, based on your last 12 months. So like I'm looking at a customer here, you know, my detail page views only uh, yield me a dollar and 40 cents. So I know if I can get them into that bucket, doesn't mean that they purchase. It just means that they got to the detail page view. On average, that's worth a dollar and 40 cents to me based on how many of those folks will actually convert. Then I also, again, get the median benchmark. So in this case, I know a detail page view for the median customer is worth 77 cents um, there. So I'm double where they are. So I know we're performing at a higher level, but then I know my top category is 774. So while my detail page view is valuable, it's still nowhere near where kind of the top half is. Um, So I definitely have some work to do to uh, to catch up to that top 5% uh, spot there. Yeah, you know, it seems like this really opens up your eyes too to see how far different the median of a category is versus the top. Uh, it is like a, I'm trying to think, it's like power ratio, like it's 80 20, and then it's like 10 uh, 40, it's like, and so on and so forth, where the t- people in the top percentile of a category really dominate. And, and that's the thing too, I'll just add one more point to that. With Amazon in general, one of the reasons we focus so much on like building up organic rankings, uh, for example, on the platform is it's very hard to win. But once you win um, on Amazon, it's self-sustaining, right? Mm -hmm. Like I sell the number one pomade on Amazon and I barely have to spend any money because I have so many branded searches now. I have so much consideration uh, because I'm the first, second, third, and fourth organic listing, Mm -hmm. um, all my top search terms, right? Um, At that point, that's where Amazon being a search engine and the fact that if you can win on the 69% of customer searches that don't include a brand name within your category, you'll also see a lot of these metrics open up. Like your brand awareness, once you reach a certain point on Amazon, is going to continue to grow because you're constantly driving new to brand buyers into the fold. And so uh, there's ways to build it solely through Amazon. It's gotten more expensive than it used to be in the past. That pomade brand is the one I invented ranking on back in, in 2016, 17 with 20 cent cost per click bids. You know, Now it costs you <laughs> 4 to $6 a click on the same terms, um, but not for me because I'm relevant. Yeah. So the consideration phase is really interesting because it, it does put a value on like, you know, what is it worth to even to get one person to view a product page? What is it worth to have a person who type my brand name in and then view a product page? It can actually tell you and you can start to understand like, is my branding enough? Like when people do land on my pages, like how much is it actually worth? Like how, how much are people moving through combining this with like the conversion rate metrics uh, on the previous page uh, and if you scroll up on this page, combining that, you can sort of see like, what can I do to boost my conversion rate? That's just going to help every metric here. So average, it's basically like your average revenue per click for a page view, which is really nice. Um, So there's some cool things there. And then on the last phase of this funnel here, we have the bottom, which is purchased. So this is just metrics on the bottom of the funnel. How many people ended up buying from me? Tell me about my top 10% and subscribe and save customers. So this is actually a really interesting one. And that at first glance, it might be a little confusing. So walk us through like the definitions of what this purchased section of the brand metrics report is. Great question. So purchased is, uh, you nailed it, right? It's the bottom of the funnel. These are customers that are actually purchasing product during that time frame, right? So if I'm looking at the month of December, uh, my top 10% and subscribe and save customers Uh, The KPI that it gives me is literally my top 10% of customers plus subscribe and save customers. Um, What is the physical number? So that's going to be the left section there. Like for example, one of my brands, my top 10% of customers plus subscribe and save makes up 1,500 total 
shoppers there, mm-hmm. right? Which is up 12% on last month. So just that those two pieces alone, I have an, a physical number of what is my what Amazon defines as my top 10%. And I also can see how that's growing or shrinking over time. So that's pretty uh, fun for that piece. Now, the secondary thing that we're going to see is the actual return on engagement over 12 months for that, right? So I know for this brand for the month of December, my top 10% of uh, customers in subscribe and save, you know, generated $23, right? Which was down 35% for that month. First glance, you're like, why is that number going downwards? Well, then I jump up to my percentage of new to brand. I had a 3% increase in new to brand customers. So what that tells me during the month of December, while my number of top customers increased, I also drove a higher degree of new to brand for the month. And that's why my overall average for my LTV went down, um, which is okay, right? One of the things that I'll find is when those numbers are going down, the uh, the top 10% or even the number of brand customers, typically your return on engagement increases because now you're looking at a data set of less new to brand, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, more mature brands, you know, ones that are 50, anywhere from 60 to, to 40% new to brand, those are ones where you're going to see a lot more stability um, within those, those KPIs there. Um, and so you won't see as much variance in like the return on engagement numbers. Those will stay the same. Um, this is like a brand that's moving very quickly. We've only been live on Amazon for 11 months uh, there. So I expect to see a lot more fluctuation in some of those KPIs accordingly. Now the brand customers, which is the second row on there, um, that's one of my favorite KPIs that they provide. So your brand customers is literally showing you how many folks are in and purchasing within your brand. So it's going to include your repeat customers and it's going to include your first time brand customers, right? So those folks that are in that consideration bucket, as well as those that have purchased from you in the past, um, you're going to get a physical number for that. So I know for this brand, I had 12,000 brand customers. It was up 12% from month prior. So my thesis with this client is we're really focused on the secondary and the third purchase. It's a very low average order value client in a very expensive category. So as a result of that, for me to be aggressive with PPC, I can't just look at the first purchase, I need to look at multiple purchases. What this data now allows me to do is start to show that this theory is correct, right? When I look at this six months ago, I had 5,890 brand customers. Um, You know, back in December, now I have 12,138 customers. So I know that I've more than doubled my repeats during that time frame. The nice part about that is I now have the justification and the data to support, let's keep spending aggressively on Amazon because we'd like to see that brand customer metric continue to increase. Um, And the cool thing is like my category median is 1,000, mine is 12,000 personally, and my top is 48,000. So now while I have much less branded search than my competitors. I have much less branded search and detail page views than my competitors. I'm actually much closer on bridging the gap in regards to brand customers, which tells me, which tells the clients our efforts are working correctly. So we should keep pushing, you know, through on this piece. Awesome. So that concludes like the run through. And I I think to sort of tie up this episode, it'd be cool to finish with the question of, you know, if someone's listening and what is the first what does their next hour look like? Uh, Like what kinds of things should they really identify and then build a list to go do? So imagine you're out there and you're opening this up for the first time. Uh What do you recommend to that person to zero in on and then uh, make a decision about what to do next? So like one thing that I like to do is take this data because it lives, you can't export it for now, which is annoying. So I'll copy and paste what I consider to be the most important ones into an Excel doc right next to each other so I can see what it looks like from a month over month basis, right? So I'll take the important indicators for me, I'll take my percentage of new to brand customers by month, I'll take my brand search only uh, on the awareness piece by month, Uh, I'll take my brand search and detail page views, which is under the consideration by month, and then I'll take the number of brand customers as well as the return on engagement for uh, each month, basically, for the top 10% of subscribe and save customers. So I'll take a couple of those KPIs and I chart them. One of the things on that piece is it allows you to visually start to see trends like um, right off the bat. I'll like even color code it. So like when there's growth, I do green. When there's shrinks, I do red. And then I like to put that side by side with my total sales data. 
so I can start to see trends like that have happened from that. So if you're doing it from the first time and you haven't been doing this you know, from the beginning, it's a good exercise to run through so you can start to see how your past has happened. One thing that I've noticed every single time that I've had a down sales month for the clients that I've run this analysis for, it's always one in which my brand customers who purchased has a downfall. So like for this client, I've been growing every single month except for the month of November, right? Month of November, we actually had a decrease in sales. And so that was, you know, definitely a little bit concerning initially. Looking at PPC performance, you know, I had like a 1% drop in my conversion rate. So I know that impacts things a little bit, uh, but didn't explain the amount I was down. One of the great pieces from that, my brand customers who purchased has been on a steady increase except for the month of November, where we saw like a 20% decrease in my brand customers. That allowed me to then start to troubleshoot, okay, why did that happen? Well, November is a very discount heavy month. I didn't do a single deal in November, right? My client keeps price steady. So no lightning deals, no coupons. Once I kind of looked into that piece, my percentage of new to brand also dropped down during that month. And I kind of had my aha moment, right? One of the things that was cool, while my brand customer went down from like 11,580 to 10,780. I also saw my top 10% in subscribe and save numbers go up during that same time frame. So it went from $30 to $36. So what that tells me is, okay, it's not that the customers that are with me are purchasing less. They're actually purchasing a higher amount over that 12 month period, but the lack of discounting caused some of those customers to not purchase during the month of November. December, I went from 1078 on brand customers who purchased to 12,000. So my spike came back. And then when I look at the total sales result, I had a you know 25% increase in my sales during the month of, of December. So these very much correlate with sales. Um, it's a really good way to start to uh, see it from a visual perspective. Now there's other ways where it can be helpful too. I've got another brand you know that has been a category leader for a while. Um, and one of the downsides I was seeing on my end a little bit early on was we were slowly losing market share on new to brand but I uh, at least I was that's what I was theorizing based on placements and things like that kept trying to get more uh, dollars from the client and she's kind of like well sales are going up right because total sales have been going up month over month over month profitability is going up um, she's like now we don't need to spend the dollars yet now six months later my new to brand has slowed down, growth has slowed down, we're, we're really like starting to hit flat on sales. So we started to then identify, okay, there's more, there's more opportunity here based on the brand metrics data. So one of the things I found, my percentage of new to brand in June was 52%, five months later, it's 46%. So I found there's an 8%, uh, 6% reduction in the people, in the new to brand buyers I'm driving. At the same time, my customers who purchased went from 19,000 to 15,000. So I've had a slow, steady decline on that piece there. Profitability has been up. My actual, like what I make per customer has gone from $127 to $146 during that time frame. So those KPIs together basically tell me, okay, where I'm slipping is I'm not driving as many new to brand. Those customers are still buying. They're buying more and more every single month actually, but I need to drive more of them into the funnel to continue the growth path that I was on. So this was my rationale for asking for a bigger, bigger ad budget so that I can get my percentage of new to brand metrics back to where they were uh, when we were in our high growth mode. Mm -hmm. I definitely encourage everyone to go listen to what you just said for the last two minutes again, um, because the key, the key thing that I think I heard was these metrics are great when you look at them in isolation, like one week or one month at a time. But to really get a lot of value out of it, put it into a spreadsheet and compare it versus like total sales, advertising spend, advertising revenue. When you look at it, look at that in all components, you can start actually teasing out, you know, uh, for total revenue, because we've never had new to brand metrics for every customer that you've had over a particular time frame, and now you do and now you can look at that and begin asking yourself like do we need to do more branding efforts do we need to push more new to brand ad spend do and then what does that mean for our overall a cost and like what would we sh what should we expect in a future month uh performance due to with total a cost and a cost as well so incredible activity like putting grabbing this data putting it into a spreadsheet so you can track it over time and really get a better understanding of your total revenue and your customer composition. Incredible insight. Yeah. Thanks though. It's uh, it's a hidden gem right now, I think, uh, mm -hmm. within there. 
you know, it's not one that you can use to, I guess, optimize your ads in real time, but it is one that I think is really important for strategy on the overall front, right? I'd like to think of PPC in a short-term basis, but it also has long-term impacts, right? And this is more on the long-term impact front. Um, it's similar to brand analytics. Like I love using their search term um, kind of feature that they have, right? Um, but that's a diagnostic tool in my opinion. I'm using it to see uh, what has changed um, you know, over time. Mm -hmm. uh, Daniel, I have to thank you so much for coming back on the show. Uh, I want to remind people where they can find you to hear more from you, straightupgrowth.com. Uh, I wish you all the best as this year kicks off, and I hope we can have you back on the show in sometime soon. Yeah, I'd love to be on. Always fun to uh, to chat Amazon. Yeah, right on, Daniel. Have a great have a great one. 